Things are not looking good for Ark Survival, Studio Wildcard, and parent company Snail Games. And not looking good is being far too generous here, because things are actually f***ing dreadful. And there's a lot of moving pieces all smashed together into this one with financial woes, dreadful corporate mismanagement, lies, walkbacks, and one of the scummiest business decisions I've ever seen. Everything is hanging in the balance for this trio. They've got to get this one right because if they screw up ARC, they won't recover. Welcome back to the channel. This is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer. And roughly three days ago, I posted this video, link in the video description and pinned comments, outlining the dirty hand being dealt to ARK fans the world over when it was announced that players that already owned the game and all of its DLCs were being held ransom with an upcoming paid upgrade to Unreal Engine 5. This further escalated when it was found that that upcoming upgrade was to be included only in a new version of the game, Ark Survival Ascended, despite it already being advertised to fans as a free upgrade. All DLCs would again have to be purchased, and for good measure, just to entice you over to this new version of the game, the official servers for the current live game would be shut down simultaneously once Ascended launched. This, of course, infuriated fans of the game, social media was ablaze, and so on. Now, over the past few days, I've been putting pen to paper, researching this topic in depth, links, DMs with suggestions, breadcrumbs, if you will, and what I found has me really concerned for this franchise, especially because, as they say, shit rolls downhill. And the management team at Snail Games is certainly rolling some serious biomass downwards, positioning them squarely in the crosshairs for this breakdown. Now, the first place I always turn when it's time to collapse some corporate cheeks is to take a look at their financial statements and earnings calls, because it is totally legal to lie in public to your consumers. But those same rules don't apply when it comes to investors. Now, we can argue market volatility and short sales, etc., but this NASDAQ trend line for Snail is disturbing. When they went public in November 2022, stocks were somewhere in the $3 to $3.5 range. And in four short months, they closed today at just $1.11. When you're losing two-thirds of your stock value in a matter of months, that isn't good. During Snail Games' fourth quarter and full year 2022 financial results news release, Jim Tsai, CEO of Snail, said this. We have built a premium portfolio of premium video games designed for use on a variety of platforms. Just in case you couldn't hear his quote clearly, here it is. We have built a premium portfolio of premium video games designed for use on a variety of platforms. Hmm. Okay, well, Jim, you may be touting this premium portfolio, but your stock prices say something completely different. Now, besides ARK, which is, of course, Snail's golden goose, we've got to give them that one, they show off other titles like this one, Last Oasis, currently sitting at a peak player count on Steam of 192 players. How about PixArk at 235 players? Atlas, which still sees at least some amount of players, probably because it's a reskinned arc, 1,812 for the 24 hour peak. And then how about this banger, Expedition Agartha, at a whopping 285 players. I could continue down through this premium portfolio, but many of these games are showing zero player counts. And by that, I mean absolutely zero players playing the game. They've also got an extensive mobile game market, of which I can't find any of their titles mentioned anywhere on the top 50 most popular mobile titles rankings. And then, of course, they've got this upcoming ARC animated series. Snail's entire fourth quarter financial report is littered with line after line, stat after stat about ARC. In fact, just glancing through this thing again, the only time another title besides ARC is mentioned is Atlas. And even then, that mention is about that $16.3 million write-down of the Atlas license in the fourth quarter of 2021. There's no diversity here, nothing to prop them up if ARC dries up. And that really concerns me. 
And speaking of concerning, let's talk about all this double talk, aka those lies that have been fed to not only the fans who currently own the game, but also to the investors themselves. We've got a January 2023 statement essentially spelling out the upcoming ARC Unreal Engine 5 free upgrade that's then walked back earlier this week in a brazen attempt to use semantics to justify that first announcement. Yeah, it's free, but you have to purchase this $50 ultimate value bundle pack in order to get that. I mean, these companies, man, there are no limitations to how deep they will dive into the scum pool. Then there's the CEO telling the investors on March 29th. Later this year, we expect to release our flagship title, Arc 2. So he's announcing that their flagship title, Arc 2, will be delivered later this year. And then just two days later, via a community crunch post, Studio Wildcard has to walk that one back and delay the game until the end of 2024. How that misleading statement is not being investigated is beyond me. Investors don't play. And if you try to throw shade at them, they'll hit you with a multi-million dollar lawsuit, of which financially, it doesn't look like Snail Games is really in a position to fight. As expected, all of these recent developments, especially that walked back free engine upgrade now turned pre-order bundle fuckery, has not sat well with the ARC community. Over on Steam, the game is beginning to get review bombed. Now, it's currently far from September 1st, 2016, when DLC was put on sale for a buggy early access game, but still, Snail can't afford any of this negative press, especially, like I said, for their cash cow, ARC. And these aren't the typical trolls that attach to the latest, most depressing issues out there. Here's a review from a player with over 3,300 hours in ARC. Quote, please note this version of the game is going to be EOL, that's end of life, come August 2023, so probably best to find something else to buy. And look, here's another with nearly 1,700 hours in the game. Quote, it will close down in four months, do not buy. In addition, gaming news publications, your Kotaku's, Game Informers, Game Rants, Eurogamers have all run this story. What the future plans for ARK will do for the game and how the community is taking the news. Again, not good for the outlook of this game. Add into the mix this description of ARK 2's paradigm shift in gaming experience, Souls-like gameplay, primitive only weaponry, strict third person mechanics, and an overall very serious tone. And some or most of this might cool down current ARC fans' desire to continue on with the franchise. Now, is ARC going to die off? You know, it's entirely possible. And even if it doesn't, it will certainly look like a completely different game and gamer base once ascended and eventually ARC 2 flicks the switch. Let's also assume that Snail, as proven by their track record, can't tell their heads from their asses. And so this is going to come down to Studio Wildcard saving what remains. Now, as of publication of this video, today is Studio Wildcard's next Community Crunch update, and they just need to let it all fly. Truth, truth, and more truth, along with a healthy dose of communication, because at this point, only something as dramatic as that is going to save them from the fire. They are facing anywhere from a 12 to 20 month ARC 2 delay and current public image that is pretty much flatlined for them, especially after their announcement to force the upgrade and then simultaneously shut down current ARC game official servers. Add in public outcries to not purchase the current version of the game due to that impending sunsetting and all ARC eyes are going to be firmly fixed on Studio Wildcard. But when Snail is involved, you would be ignorant to not be concerned when it comes to the future of ARC. As always, leave me your feedback in the comment section below and I'll do my best to respond. If you liked the video, maybe consider hitting that subscribe button. And while you're at it, ring the notifications bell to receive my latest upload alerts. You can find and follow me over on Twitch, Twitter, and of course in my open community Discord server, links to all of which can be found in the video description and pinned comments below. Shout out to the over 115,000 of you that have taken the leap and subscribed. And as always, a special thanks to my patrons over on Patreon. Until the next one, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.